Watercolor is a transparent medium. That means everything you do in watercolor, we try to avoid using opaque paint. Well, rules mean to be broken. Not everyone uses that way. I'm not asking you to do that, but I'm asking you to consider using white. When you're using white, it's not like an oil painting that you paint or pack white on top of any colors and get the white effect. In watercolor painting, the lightest part is your surface white. That means paper's white is your whitest white. So as much as you can reveal the whitest part of the paper, you are more masterful. This is what old master says. So keep it in mind, when painting with the white, try to use as much as possible of the advantage of the paper, whiteness of the paper. If you can do that, you will see your painting will go into the next level. Let's, in this video, I'm going to do some exercises and I will show you five different techniques how you can reveal your whites and then I will do a painting with you and we're going to see how it looks like using those techniques. Let's take a look. Okay, the first we will talk about the paper white is the key. To paint anything white, the whiteness of the paper is the whitest white on your canvas. Uh, for example, if we paint a cloud, we paint basically the surrounding of the cloud, like that. And then in the cloud, the shadow part of the cloud, we can probably paint like that. Okay, now what we can do, we just soften the edge. And we can create a cloud like that. As you can see, I kept these whiteness of the paper uh, empty. So I, I never tried to paint that one with the white paint or something like that. So this is the first rules. The whiteness of the paper is the whitest part of your canvas. So leave that one as it is. This is the um, basic rules of watercolor. Well, rules mean to be broken. We don't always do in that way, but in classical watercolor, all the old master did in this way. Left the whitest part as for highlight or anything, the whitest object in your painting, they needs to be like that. Okay. Now, there are some scenarios where we have to use the opaque paint. For example, let's do a background. And what I'm going to do, I will use a figure inside it. So just use a lavender with a bit of blue mix. And I'll use neutral tint for the lid. And use a bit of red for the face. Now, at this point, opaque paint needs to be used when your painting is dry so this is dry now so what we can do we can use some opaque paint for example gouache paint or acrylic white paint you can use that one i use gouache paint and straight from the tube and we can use that one as a highlight so this is the gouache paint i use i just use straight from the tube and use that as a highlight. So this small sort of thing, you can do that one. And that's an efficient way of doing it. And uh, as I said, the opaque paint uh, shouldn't be used in your entire painting or something like that. It shouldn't be used more than five to 10%. That's, that's a basic classic watercolor rule. Let's take a look at another example of using white. So, same kind of scenario, so there is another way of tackle this kind of scenario is negative painting. For example, in that case, we may have to add a figure in there. So in that case, what we can do, we can just paint around the figure.
if that's possible. And then we can paint inside the figure. But in that case, we can leave the highlights wherever the highlights need to be. In this side, I'm not going to put any highlight in there. Just like face. And I'm going to leave it, as you can see, very carefully I'm painting in this way. So I'm leaving just some highlight on, 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 on the shoulder and on the, on the head. So this is another way of uh, using white in your watercolor painting. Another method is very uh, effective that is subtraction method but we use this method to regain the light sometimes the whiteness of the paper so let's fill it up with a background um, using ultramarine blue you can use any dark color this method is very useful to do the underwater painting or something like that let's fill it up with uh, some uh, dark color and when you put any paint in that you need to make make sure you do that one uh, when you have the certain wetness in your paper that means if your paper and pigment loses its shine then it won't work so you have to do that one um, when you have that uh, glossy effect um, as you can see in here glossy effect on your on your paint and paper so you need to make sure you do that uh, before it gets a little bit dried up there is the next stage is it loses its shininess so if you do that in that way then you will have a problem with your painting now on the next stage you will have to use a fresh water wet your brush and then remove the paints out from the surface you can use a paper towel to wipe off your brushes and bristles every time but you need to make sure you use fresh water so that the whiteness comes back now you can make it any shape anything you want to paint on there or you can again bring it back the whiteness and you can use different colors in there as well for example oh I I just painted some maple leaves just floating on a water or something like that. Uh, don't worry about how the painting comes up. I'm just telling you how to do that one so that you can do it you know, in your own composition and design. So let's paint on top of that. Also, we can have the highlights on in there. And another thing you can do now is to use scratching technique. This is subtraction technique as well to bring back some whiteness of the paper again using different texture. Or you can even use the glazing technique to make the top one or to create the distances, the depthness, something like that. So hope this makes sense and uh, uh, this is another very nice way to using uh, bring back your white and using your white or highlights uh, by scratching or subtraction technique. Now the glazing technique. So as you know that glazing is a very thin layer of transparent watercolor on top of a dried painting. For example if we just paint a bunch of trees here and uh, I let it dry completely then I can use the white as a glazing to have some foggy effect or something like that to create a distent or to create a, an early morning scene something like that so as you can see it's dried up so 
it's just created some white uh, with the water whiteness so to match it up i can have a glazing of white so that it have a synchronized way of creating foggy sort of thing you may have to do multiple layer of glazing because if the one single layer uh, doesn't create that effect you may have to do another one and another one so this is the final one as you can see it's dried up and it created a small little foggy effect in there these are very helpful when you do a landscape or if you have to you can now uh, when it's completely dried off you can add some gouache or opaque white uh, to use the fogs or smoke something like that so this is a very intelligent way of using white so now uh, i'm gonna draw another one this is not a using of white but this is a very interesting one you, using the comparative color you can deceive the human eye and you can paint other than something other than white but that will look like white for example if i paint a boat and just do a background sky or something like that a little sunlight or something like that then i just add lavender bluish or any sort of color maybe you can do a maroon or red something like this and uh, to splash of water usually white the opaque white but you can't avoid doing that one as well you can simply use any lighter color like bluish or anything and uh, uh, with, with the combination of darker value so those lighter color will look like that's white for example here i have it down at the bottom dark blue and on the top i have a little bit darker red or burn sienna now if i use a middle value in there like blue or lavender something like that just a little bit light it up and this blue or lavender will look like white when it's dried up even though they are not white but it will look like white and it will deceive the human eye to compare against those darker value and create that effect that will look like a white so you can uh, you can avoid painting white or opaque white color in there to have a little bit of uh, effect uh, you can use very tiny hint of gouache or opaque white to show the uh, splash effect or something like that but you don't have to use the whole lot of gouache or acrylic white paint to display the splash effect of the water you can you can still completely avoid them by having more darker values surrounding there so what i'm going to do now i'm going to paint one scene that and i will try to implement all of this thing that we have practiced today and uh, uh, I'll try to show how we can use white in different ways in one painting. Let's see how this comes up. So this is the sketch I have done. It's just a simple sketch. It is a sketch of a cafe and just two car parked in there. And in the background, I've got some trees and foliages in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint all the sky first. And I will show how I can implement all these four, five steps to uh, to use white in several different ways. So for the sky, I just use a simply whatever I had in my palette, like a bluish cool color. So it doesn't matter, just a sky. But I left, as you can see, I left some spaces, uh, uh, white spaces on my paper to show some whiteness of the paper uh, as a cloud or whatever is that it's some randomness when i paint i don't try to so the i don't try to remove these uh, random whiteness on the paper i just leave them as as they are so uh, this shows the natural instinct of watercolor and uh, shows the natural way of painting I will now paint the roof of the house 
and uh, what I want to do, I want to show one part of the uh, roof uh, reflected by the light. So I will just leave uh, leave those papers white in there. So I'm using a laser and crimson with a mix of burnt sienna and just having some dry brush effects. And this area, as you can see, this area, I will leave them as white. Um, maybe I will, I will make the edges a little bit softer. Um, a little bit softer in here with the fresh, clean water. Just rubbing them off to make it softer. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that lavender to uh, to depict as white as I have some dark values around there and I'm going to use the, uh, do the negative painting of the car here and I will use the lavender or any, any other cool blue colors and that will work as white there. So not necessarily you have to use the white every time you can use some other light color uh, which in the shadow uh, uh, like you know they will depict uh, they will portray the type of white you have so I, I can use that one in the all through the walls So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the middle part with Elysian Crimson and a bit of Burnt Sienna mixed. And I will do here two things. One is doing the subtraction method by lifting up, lifting the colors. And another one is negative painting to save the highlights. So this one will be the, uh, the lifting part. I'm just lifting the colors in there the reason I'm doing that way so that you have the effect of red uh, because these are the glass doors and uh, so you have the effect of the red and showing the sunlight behind or inside the room the cafe room something like that so when it's done I'll just add the figure and uh, this figure, it's a very simple figure, just to, uh, and add some dark color down the bottom and uh, I'll use probably uh, another dark color, bluish dark colors. And I will keep the highlight on the right hand side because sun is coming from the right hand side. So um, I will just fill this one up and leave a little bit. There you go. So in this stage, I have used two techniques. One is subtraction method by lifting up the colors before we use the scratching. And this one is using negatives to save the highlights. Now I will use the glazing technique in here using the opaque white. A little bit of that make sure this is dry and uh, I need to use more white in there to have some dramatic effect so I will just add a bit of white a little bit of blue mixed in there so I'm just using pure white in whole all of this painting this is the only place I used some gouache and a very little tiny gouache try to have some dramatic effect with the smoky dramatic effect in there 
So you can see I have used all of these, all of the technique that we have discussed. And uh, uh, I will just do some finishing touch and finish this off now. So, the real magic of watercolour lies in its transparency and to have an idea of when to reveal the whiteness of the paper, when to use a little bit of opaque, when to scratch, when to use some, some subtle glazing, this kind of stuff. And that's how you can transform your painting to something masterpiece. So, next time, when you reach for white, try to think. Is it really necessary? I'll see you in the next video. Bye.